So this is my first attempt uh, to flip my classroom, meaning I'm going to post a short lecture with a PowerPoint, and this will be homework for my USAP class to watch and follow along with. So what we're going to talk about today is the American Revolution and the major battles of the American Revolution. Um, we've been talking in class about the road to revolution from the proclamation of 1763 up to the first shots that were fired. And you'll remember that the first shots of the American Revolution were fired well before the Declaration of Independence. Many people remember 1776 as the year of independence and think that's when the revolution started, but it actually started a year earlier, April 19th, 1775. You'll remember with the Quartering Act, there were a lot of British soldiers in Boston and the colonies, and they were being forced on the colonists. Uh, the colonists were expected to quarter them, feed them, and house them. And so their tensions were rising in Massachusetts particularly, but all in the colonies uh, in, in 1775. On April 18th um, in 1775, the uh, uh, General Thomas Gage, who was the commander of troops, British troops in Boston, sent a group out to seize some colonial supplies that were at Concord. Um, many people remember the, the ride of Paul Revere. Paul Revere and another rider, William Dawes, uh, alerted the militia, or the Minutemen, as they were called, the colonials who could be ready at a minute's notice, um, that the British were coming. They probably would have said something like, the regulars are coming. Um, but the British were coming, and on the way to Concord at Lexington, they met a force of Minutemen, and there was a standoff on the Village Green. A shot was fired. Nobody knows who fired the first shot, but it was the shot heard around the world. Um, the British went on to Concord, seized some uh, weapons, destroyed some supplies, and then marched back to Boston. But along their way, um, the militia were kept shooting at them and attacking them as they went. And this was kind of eye-opening for the British. They suffered about 250 casualties that day, but they also realized that they weren't up against, as uh, they, they thought that the colonists were just a ragtag bunch of amateur fighters and they were kind of humiliated uh, by the the losses and and also angered and, and frustrated by the way the colonials would fight the the big battle that follows this and the bloodiest battle of the uh, revolutionary war will take play be called the battle of bunker hill on June 17, 1775, the summer of 1775. It actually takes place on Breed's Hill, which is next to Bunker Hill. The Colonials had gone in and, and gotten the high ground, and the British come across from Boston, and they launch a frontal assault, and the the Americans, or the, the Colonials, are able to really hold their own. Um, they... they kill a, a many British. Um, Forty percent of the British force were were uh, uh, were wounded or, or killed. Over a thousand um, British uh, were were casualties at the at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Americans lost 140 that were killed and 441 that were wounded they would the the colonials would eventually have to give up the hill when they ran out of gunpowder but the way that they fought the casualties that they inflicted on the british um really gave the americans a lot of confidence and also um showed the 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 British that they were in for a real fight. Um, following the the battle at Bunker Hill, um, there will be a last ditch effort by the Second Continental Congress to um, uh, pass the the 
the olive branch petition. They sent an olive branch petition to King George in which they pledged their loyalty and asked him to intercede on their behalf with Parliament to secure peace and protect the colonial rights. King George dismisses this and um, insists, uh, uh, agrees with Parliament when they pass the Prohibitory Act, which basically declares the colonials in open rebellion. So we're looking at up here the, the 1775, the summer of 1775, and then from July of 1775 to um, March of 1776, Boston is going to be under siege. And in March of 76, the, um, the British are going to leave Boston and then focus their attention on New York. The uh, Second Continental Congress comes together in June of 1775, and this is follows the first Continental Congress that had formed a year earlier and this is going to be the Congress that governs the colonies through the um, the Revolutionary War. They will name George Washington as their commander-in-chief. Um, this is done partially for political reasons. He's a Virginian and they want to make sure that Virginia is firmly in on this war. They also can issue paper money to pay for the war debts, and they will, uh, a year later, after much debate, uh, decide to declare independence for the colonies. Um, the, uh, the Second Continental Congress will meet in Philadelphia, and some of our famous images that we get of the revolutionary time period come from this, these two paintings one of the the committee that's drafting the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin Franklin, uh, John Adams in the middle, and Thomas Jefferson standing with the pen, and then the the image underneath, which is supposedly when they're they're presenting their declaration. Um, we we celebrate on the Fourth of July, and that's our our Independence Day. But actually, the vote was taken, and uh, independence was accepted on the 2nd of July, uh, 1776. It was formally announced and read on the 4th of July, and it wasn't until August um, that many of the the signers actually came together and signed. There would be a couple uh, members of the Second Continental Congress that voted for independence that would would not sign, that didn't sign because they were still hoping for resol uh, some sort of peaceful resolution with uh, England. So in the timeline of the revolution, the Declaration of Independence is going to be up here after Lexington and Concord and Bunker Hill. Uh, the British are going to be very confident of their victory. They are, um, you know, much, they have superior numbers, population, resources, they have the strongest navy in the world, um, but they are an ocean away, and that, that is going to um, hurt them. They also underestimate the colonials' commitment to their political ideology. It's tough to fight a war on somebody else's turf and the British will be over here fighting and the colonials will be defending their ground. This is a battle map that shows um, the British leave Boston up here after those initial battles and then they're going to come in and they're going to be in New York and battling Washington's troops um, in New York. Um, much of the fighting will take place in the New York, New Jersey region in the uh, middle part of the wars, and then the war will end down here when the British head south and the fighting goes to what is now North Carolina and South Carolina and Virginia. Um, the British are in New York and Washington's troops are there, and Washington understands that he can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British. His his goal is to drag out the war and keep his army together and avoid a, a huge defeat. Um, he figured that the British would get tired of war and that the best option was to, um, to keep the army together and fight and run and not get caught. Uh, the colonial army um, 
had to adopt these uh, the the political reasons of the war, and um, he hopes that they will um, become you know patriots. But ultimately, they have to avoid being crushed early on in the war. And and Washington's able to to do this. He's able to get out of get out of New York um, and then retreat. Um, up into or down into what is today uh, New Jersey. Um, we remember the the David McCullough tells the story of how he is able to get his troops, Washington that is, get his troops um, over on to Manhattan and escape from New York. General Howe will replace General Gage for the British after after the British leave Boston and then in the summer of 1776 when the fighting is in New York the Americans are are pinned against the 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 Hudson River and the British are pressing in on them and there is this thick fog and and Washington is able to to evacuate his troops from the Brooklyn Heights over on to um, Manhattan, and then they're able to retreat up and get out of New York. This will give New York City to the British, um, and Washington will retreat into New Jersey. And the British at this point think that it's just a matter of time before the, the colonials give up. Um, General Howe, sensing this, issues pardons to any any um, colonials who will swear their a loyalty to Britain and 3,000 accept. But in the winter of 1776, Washington is going to be able to um, cross the Delaware. Um, and just after, in the night, in the morning after Christmas, and surprise, uh, about a thousand Hessians. Hessians were German soldiers who were hired guns that the, the king had brought over to fight. He surprises this group of Hessians at Trenton. Um, and many of them had been celebrating uh, for Christmas, had drank too much beer, were sleeping it off, and, and Washington can come in there and surprise them. A week later, um, he's going to defeat a smaller British force at Princeton, and the British are going to be forced to pull um, back to New York from um, New Jersey. This is this is going to rekindle the wartime patriotism. Um, they're going to the British are going to give up on New Jersey and leave that to to the uh, leave that to the Americans. Um, so that will be in the in January of 1777, and on our timeline we're right here, December and January 76 and 77. Um, 77 is going to be known as the year of the the bloody sevens in the back country. Uh, George Rogers Clark uh, will take a group of men past where Evansville is today and, and capture um, forts, British forts in the interior in an effort to stop the Indian attacks on the, on the frontier. Um, while Clark is getting his men together, the battle of... Uh, of Saratoga is going to um, take place, and, and Johnny Burgoyne, John Burgoyne, will be uh, defeated. The British will be defeated at Saratoga, um, and the the British strategy will be to to separate um, the the New England England colonies from the lower colonies, and then to have a decisive battle, the kind of battle that Washington understands that he can't fight. Um, Burgoyne's going to move his British troops in from Canada and Howe's army moves up from New York and they meet in Albany and it's in upstate New York at the Battle of Saratoga that this this big win for um, for the American troops will take place. One of the big um, benefits of the, the win at Saratoga is going to be 
that the French will see the Americans as legitimate and will then be able to come to their aid. The Spanish and the Netherlands will also enter the war later in 1779 and this is Britain is now faced with what becomes a, a world war, not just a war with their colonials. Saratoga is also going to be a big shot in the arm for the American patriotic movement. It is after the battle at Saratoga that Washington and his men will winter at Valley Forge, and that, that winter will be very difficult on his army, but they will they will survive. Food is scarce, and the the but Baron von Steuben will show up and will help bring some discipline and and whip the army into shape and the Valley Forge is going to demonstrate America's resolve um, in in these horrible conditions so with the uh, win at Saratoga um, the French will get involved um, the French are always willing to uh, fight the British and there's a long history through the 1700s of Britain and France fighting and the French and Indian War was what impacted the colonies the most but there were many other wars so the French helped the colonists to get back at the British for their defeat in the in the Seven Years War um, Saratoga is going to be the thing that shows the French that the, the colonists are, are worth betting on um, and uh, the British um, are going to be concerned about this this French colonial alliance and will ultimately end up suing for peace after several more defeats. In the back country in 1779, February 25th, Fort Sackville will fall. That's the fort at Vincennes. And George Rogers Clark had led an expedition into the west to stop these Indian attacks on the back country. The year of the Bloody Seven, 1777, they were especially bad. They continued into 1778. And he, he sails down from Louisville, down the Ohio, and then crosses and takes some old French settlements and uh, at Kaskaskia and Cahokia and then marches his men through southern Illinois to surprise the British governor Henry Hamilton who had come down from Detroit to Fort Sackville in Vincennes. Um, Hamilton doesn't think there's any way that Clark can get there in the middle of the winter and he figures that he's probably wintering at Kaskaskia and Clark shows up in uh, mid-February and surprises him and is able to capture the fort and the governor and this will secure the back country for the colonies. Um, by March of, of 1780 the British Army is going to adopt a southern strategy and they're going to concentrate their military campaigns in Virginia and Carolina where there were more loyalists the British are going to land in March of 70, 1780 at Charleston, South Carolina. And we're going to see um, that the British are betting on these uh, loyalists in the South um, to, to help them. Um, some of the battles that we see that are, that are decisive in this last stage of the war um, include... Um, cow pens in the Guilford County Courthouse and then ultimately the final battle at Yorktown. Um, the Continental Army rallied under Na uh, Nathaniel Green um, will push Cornwallis down and back him up at, um, at Yorktown where the French are on one side and the uh, French forces are are out in the the bay the French Navy and military forces and Washington's uh, armed forces are pressing from the other side and the British will surrender cor under the the command of General Cornwallis this will be the final battle of the the war um, and then the loyalists who who had bet on and stuck with the king now have something have to make a decision um, 
many of them leave the United States um, and they um, they are treated poorly on both sides. Uh, they're never fully accepted by the English and, if, and the ones that stay here often lose their property and are, some are imprisoned, some are even executed by the Patriots. So to be a loyalist was to sort of be like the uh, the Indians after the French and Indian War, especially the Indians that sided with the French. Um, here's a map that shows um, Patriot strongholds, and you can you can see why maybe the the um, why the or um, I'm sorry that shows uh, Loyalist strongholds, and you can see why um, the British may be focused on this southern campaign, hoping to capitalize on some of these. Um, Loyalist strongholds. Um, the the end of the war will come with the peace treaty in 1783, the the Treaty of Paris. Um, like the 1763 Treaty of Paris, this one will end the American Revolution. Independence uh, will be recognized by the British, and the U.S. will get all of the territory east of the Mississippi between Canada and Florida. Um, this is significant. Uh, the without George Rogers Clark taking the interior, the British may have tried to hold um, the interior land and use the proclamation line of 1763 as the boundary, but we get all of what will become Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and part of Minnesota. Um, also, the U.S. secures fishing rights in North America, and... Um, the U.S. is to help British merchants and loyalists collect debts, and the success of that is is um, is not always uh, universal. Um, so this will this is sort of a, a quick overview of the the Revolutionary War, and basically pages one fifty 150 to one fifty nine in your textbook.